Hello and welcome to KennyRoy.com. I'm Kenny Roy. This is the Ask Video Mail for the week of June 25th, 2012. Thank you for being here to all you new members and welcome back to all the old members. The Ask Video Mail is your chance to get your question in character animation or performance answered in a video just like this one. But I need your question if I'm going to answer it, so please send your questions to webmaster at kennyroy.com. I go through all the questions and I answer the ones that I think will help the most people. There's no such thing as a stupid question and it's the best way to get the most out of your subscription. <sighs> I have that down so well now, like I, I bet you I'm gonna start saying it in my sleep. I bet you my wife is gonna wake up, wake me up in the middle of the night and say like, you said like, hello and welcome to kennyware.com and you just start going, going to video mails and Anyway, I hope that doesn't happen. Let's just cross our fingers. But I am a sleepwalker and a sleep talker, so it's bound to happen. I'll tell you what, if my wife ever wakes me up and tells me that I'm, that I'm running through the, the Ask Video Mail spiel, um, I'll give everybody a, a free month. All right, and I'll be honest about this. You can trust me. So uh, it's a great week uh, this week on Friday. Make sure you're here on the uh, member homepage of KennyRoy.com. Just like the webcast, we're doing another webcast on Friday. It's from 4 p.m. Pacific to 5 p.m. And I'm going to be talking to a good friend, Jason Farine, and he is a physical uh, therapist a personal trainer and he knows um, a lot about ergonomics and he's helped me out with some shoulder issues in the past. He's a great guy. You're really going to enjoy it. It's free for all members. So just show up here on the homepage of, uh, of the member homepage on KennyRoy.com and you'll watch that. And one more time, Friday the 29th of June. All right, this Friday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm really, really much looking forward to it. I'm gonna be doing some special announcements during the webcast, uh, some things having to do with Little Painter, some things maybe having to do with other stuff. It's going to be great. So you don't want to miss it because there's some great announcements then. And come on, the webcasts are an awesome bonus to your subscription here at KennyRoy.com. The video mails and the lectures and the resources, I'm hoping, you know, all add up to be worthwhile and worth your subscription. But the webcast, I mean, is really my, um, my way of trying to really give you guys uh, a lot of value. So if you have an idea for a webcast in the future, you can put that in the resource wish list alongside your suggestions for uh, lectures or for the resources for the site. So I check that and I, uh, I really do I take into consideration um, how long have I been doing this? So over a year and a half now. So there's like 15 or 16 lectures plus all the old ones I did before I had the site and at least 100 video mails by now. So um, that being the case, uh, you know, I, I take in, obviously the video mails are all user generated, it's all your questions, but uh, I think at least maybe a third to maybe half of the lectures have been user suggestions. So I really do take that seriously, but I, I also need some ideas for webcasts. What can I do? What can I do live that um, will interest you and, and will, will, uh, will, will uh, you know, will bring you back to the site? And on that note, if you're an affiliate, think about what you would want to tell your friends or to post on your blog, something that would be um, exciting and would drive, uh, you know, drive your members uh, to KennyRoy.com because as an affiliate, if they follow your link to my site, uh, the cookie actually lasts for seven days. So if they follow your link to my site, you get a commission on any subscription and it's for the life of the subscription every single month or purchase in the store. So think about that from an affiliate point of view as well. I have a lot of people who've signed up as an affiliate. Um, there have been a few sales, uh, not as much as um, you know, I, would, uh, I would think you know, it's very exciting to be able to earn money on, on, on the site. So uh, you know, go out there, go out there and, and come up with some great ways and, and, and you know, uh, just have fun with it. I would say, if you already have a blog, you know, put that affiliate link up and uh, and maybe think about uh, writing blog posts whenever there is a like a webcast or anything that's uh, exciting happening on KennyRoy.com. Okay, uh, let's get to the question. It's a really good one. I haven't answered a question that is this um, kind of uh, intense for for a while. So uh, let's get right to it. Well, what, what I like about this question mostly is that it asks, like, how do you not get caught up in the physical details? As animators, we do have that, those two things. We have the motion and the emotion. 
right? So there is so much that we have to keep in mind at all times in terms of, the, excuse me, in terms of the physicality and literally how things are moving. And if that's not right, well, then the emotion won't be right either, right? So it's 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 actually very. Uh, it, it's very much multitasking at all times. Even though, even if you're focusing on one thing, it's multitasking at all times. What I like to first do is, and this is going to be like another pitch for secondary. What I like to do is, I like to come up with a secondary action that really allows me to color it and 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 keep the intensity and the focus on the the character intent throughout the shot. Okay. It's so much easier with a secondary action than without a secondary action to keep character intent in mind. Okay. Now, um, if you remember from the secondary lecture, which is in the store right now, if you haven't seen the lecture, it's one of my best lectures, uh, if not only for the reason that I give at least 50 to 60 different uh, suggestions for secondary actions that you can try. Um, just that list alone is, is, is worth the time to watch the lecture. Uh, but what you remember from the secondary, secondary action lecture is that secondary actions, the best part about them is not really doing them themselves. It's when you can color it. It's when you can change it or, or do something different with it that makes it so that it's, it's, it's really like selling that subtext and that subtlety. So if I'm talking to you and you say something that, uh, I don't know, let's say that offends me, and then I stop doing what I was just doing. That secondary action had no contribution to the scene, really. Like, what does twirling a pen actually do? Doesn't really show my, my intent. But if I say, if I'm talking to you about a club that we're both, we both run, and then you say, and, and I want to go one direction, but you, I don't know if you really want to go the same direction as me. And then you say something that, that is totally clear that, no, no, I want, to, I want to do this. And then I stop. All of a sudden, this thing that was basically useless to the scene, it was just, just superfluous. It was just extra added motion. Okay? All of a sudden, it you cash it in and all of a sudden it, it's the thing that's contributing to the scene the most in an instant it becomes the thing that's contributing the most to the scene okay why because i know my character's intention is to get that information out of you and once i hear clear as day that what you want is totally not what i want I need some way, some physical way, to show that, that my intentions have basically been like fulfilled. Like what I was going for has been answered. And it's not the answer I want. Without, without that secondary action, you can, you can make a character just like intense as possible. And then when I get my answer, you know, your choices, I'm not going to say they're limited because really you can, you can the, the, actually animation is always limitless. But in terms of how you're going to be able to um, use motion in the body to show like, oh, well, that's not what I wanted to hear. It's going to be all just like these micro adjustments within the face, probably like, you know, head, neck and shoulders and, and all of that. How much mileage are you actually getting, right? How much more natural is it as well to have a character doing something? Because humans, we're always doing something. We're, we're, we're working, we're moving with our hands, we're doing, we're always doing something. So the point I'm trying, I'm driving home here is that when you have that secondary action, the character's intent never gets caught up or you never lose it getting caught up in the physicality. Why? Because you're working the physicality in a fine-tuned way to help that intent. Okay? So it never gets in the way. It's not like you can be doing something and then it's like, oh man, I'm just like animating him, him like frying this egg, you know, you know, and and I, I need to show that he's angry. And like, uh, all I'm doing is spending my time having him fry this egg. 
like, why are you having him just fry the egg and then also thinking about how angry he's going to be? Have him fry the egg angry. What's the difference between the, you know, the way you fry an egg? If you're happy, you know, you might poke at it with the spatula and check it and no, it's okay and then shake it or whatever. And, but if you're angry, you might like be shaking it and then flipping it and it doesn't work and then oh, bang the pan, you know, do it again, right? So the character's emotion comes through, comes totally through that secondary action. So I hope that that is a strong enough pitch uh, for a secondary for you guys. If you haven't seen the secondary lecture, check it out now. Um, it, it, it is really the window into subtext. The question I like to ask, and I, I, I ask this uh, every single time I, I give any talk on, on secondary, is if you aren't sold on the, the worth of secondary yet, then, then try to answer this question. Can you imagine the difference in literally the action of ironing? The ironing itself, not the character, not, not their pose and their face and whatever, but literally the, the motions of ironing. Can you, can, you, can you imagine the difference between the person ironing the suit that their son is graduating in and the suit that their husband is being buried in? Just the ironing itself. Can you imagine the subtle differences? Okay. And if you can, then you should, it should immediately be apparent to you why physicality needs to be meshed with, intertwined with, married to the character intent. And not physicality exists alone in a scene and character intent exists alone in the scene. Now I know there are some exceptions to that. Like if you have a character walking and they're trying to just get somewhere and they're, but they're also like emoting at the exact same time. It's hard, uh, 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 walking and, and running are very, very difficult to color. Walking is a little bit easier to color of course because you can just gesture with your hands you can have like a, a pose and you can hit poses and you can stop and start when you're walking. Running is impossible to, to really color, okay? Running is just l literally, it takes out any question of whether you're trying to get from A to B as fast as you can because you are, period, end of story. So I understand some scenes, the physicality really does kind of override the emotions and you really have to go very top level, you know, n no layers of subtlety or subtext on that. You know, if a character's on a roller coaster and they're flipping around the track, you're probably not going to give them a secondary action. If they're excited, you're going to put their hands in the air and they're going to be like, wah, right? So how much, how much higher level can you get? You can't. So. So I understand that, but I think really the intent of the question, no pun intended, the intent of the question was really to try to find a balance between getting uh, motion and emotion in the scene. And I gotta tell you, it might seem like cheating, but I really think if I had to start all over in, in, in animation and, and learn, I wouldn't animate, first of all, I wouldn't animate anything over 150 frames for five years. I know it sounds weird, but, but also every single shot would have a, once I moved on to characters, every single shot would have a secondary action. That's how I would just like start every scene, just a secondary action, and then build, build on the scene from there. If it was a guy, you know, Another example I love to give is a guy at like a garage, like cleaning something, and he sees a car come up. You know, what is, what is the difference going to be between the way he's like cleaning like that carburetor if the car is the, is the same color and model of the car of his business partner that ran away with his wife? Or the car is the same make and model as his uh, daughter was killed in a car accident? You know, how is he, but not just the whole body, how is he literally going to change what he's doing right here with his hands? And that kind of subtlety is where you want to be. 
Okay, great question. I love these kinds of questions. Uh, I love answering them, I, but I also love the Maya demonstrations and I love to receive Maya files, so you can send me those as well. Thank you for sending in the question. Please send one in if you haven't already, or if you have sent one in and it's been a long time, I probably am trying to roll it into a lecture or something bigger, um, so send another one. All right, I really have a lot of fun with these. I hope you get some, as much out of them as I, as, I, uh, as I try to put into them. All right, so send more questions to webmaster at kennyrory.com. Thank you for your questions and good luck with your animation as always. Rock on.